And hello, everyone. I am Conrad Ayasi, and I have the privilege of serving on your Board of Trustees. Please know that whoever you love, wherever you are on your personal journey of faith or search for meaning, you are truly welcome. If you are visiting or connecting for the first time, we are grateful to have you with us. We come together in beloved community to grow in wisdom to welcome and deepen relationships, and to act for a just and sustainable world. We recognize that our responsibility to be stewards of this land and to acknowledge that we do this with those for whom this is their traditional territory, the people of the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising the Siksika, Piguni, Gainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina and the Stony Nakoda, including Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations of the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. In offering a land acknowledgement, we honor those who have long been the stewards of this very land and we accept our shared responsibility for being good caretakers. We acknowledge that treaties were entered into as a collaboration between settlers and indigenous people. And this makes us all treaty people. Personally, I am a member of Calgary Unitarians because here I can personally grow in wisdom as said above examining and developing my personal values. Here I have the opportunity to deepen my relationship with people who also embrace our seven principles. And I'm very comfortable to be able to do that. And here I feel support for my personal actions to make the world a better place. We have two announcements today. First is the bidding period for our time and talent auction has been now extended to March 3rd. So you still have time to bid on these wonderful dinners, computer tutoring, homemade pies, and lots more. Go to the Wednesday e-news for the link to our action website or to our website and type in auction in the search bar. You will see the full list of items available and the highest bids so far. If you have any questions, contact Liz Blackstock, not me. Contact Liz and let's get the bidding going. Lastly, 
Do you have a passion for, or just maybe just an interest in social justice and want to know how you can get involved in helping us fulfill our mission for a just and sustainable world? Well, come to the main coffee room at 1215 today for a social justice organizational meeting. Feel free to enjoy the Zoom coffee breakout rooms ahead of time and then come back to the main coffee room at 1215 for our social justice event. And now over to Reverend Deborah for the lighting of the chalice. Thank you, Conrad, for that welcome. We create sacred space with the simple act of our intention and we signify it with the lighting of a chalice. A chalice symbolic of the warmth of community and the brightness that love brings to the world. Illuminating our search for justice and peace. Light, that force that nurtures all living things. Here in our midst, in this tiny flame, so tiny and so significant. Let us light the chalice. I want to add my gratitude for your being here today, for choosing to be part of the Calgary Unitarian service this morning, for in choosing community, you have chosen to be connected. And this is something we all long for. The need for connection is even more critical in these days when we are forced to not be directly and physically connected with each other. Yet, there are ways to be. And we thank you for being here this morning. I also want to extend a special expression of gratitude to our service participants. To our board members, Conrad and Jane Eburn. To our AV team, Hendrick and Christopher here with us this morning, and Bob, who will polish up the service and post it on our YouTube station. And thanks to our coffee host, Daria, who will make sure that you have a small group to chat with following the service. And of course, our amazing staff. Sheila McMaster, whose presence is always so welcome, engaging, and I always wonder what she might say or offer. And of course, our most amazing director of music, Jane Perry, who has a few words for you now. Good morning, friends. It's good to be together with you again in this virtual environment. You know, when we open the door of welcome, we're opening that door not only to longtime community members and friends of Calgary Unitarians, but those who may be with us for the very first time. So even in this virtual environment, we can open the door wide and welcome everybody in. Let's sing our first song together. Open the door. Right. 
Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you. And today I want to talk about uh, what the children and youth are doing this week. And it's all about playing. And so this week we have boardgamearena.com where people can sign up for free and then we just become friends. And the kids this week, we're going to be playing Sushi Go and the Youth Forbidden Island. And this week, the CYRE newsletter has tips for playing with your kids, just five minutes, and 87 high energy indoor games, which, as we know, is very needed at this time of year. Um, and we also just had our See You Friday games night for young adults. And if you're between 18 and 45, come on out. We're going to have it the every third Friday of the month. And we had a really great game. I would say Forbidden Island is a cooperative game. And we died horribly the first time. But the second time, we pulled it out of the bag. And we won with no seconds to spare. And so it was very exciting and a lot of fun. So I invite you to come out for that. And tonight, um, oh, I want to add, George Bernard Shaw has a great quote about play. And it is, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And now I'd like to introduce our wonderful book today. It's called The Curious Garden. And I want to give a shout out to volunteer Arno Baruma for doing the slides for me this morning. So I'm just going to get them up. And he did a fabulous job. So just one moment here. There we go. There once was a city. Hold on one second here. It's in a new format for me. There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their entire time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. However, there was one boy who loved being outside, even on the drizzly days, while everyone else stayed inside. You could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway as he did from time to time when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs and pushed open the door and stepped out onto the railway, and the first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color, and wildflowers and plants were the last thing he had expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying and they needed a gardener. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems, but the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants begin to feel like a real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. And the tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the track and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the curious garden explored every corner of the railway. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants.
Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their wintry sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring, it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first, and they popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old and forgotten things. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Other mysteriously popped up all at once. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed, but of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. And that is the end of our story today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I want to say how much I love that story because it shows how it just takes one person to make a difference and inspire others to plant the seeds of community. And now to the steward, the stewardship team has a few thoughts on healthy gardens. It's that time of year again, stewardship time. We take this time every year to acknowledge the need to support our congregation in very many ways. But this also includes financial support. We on the stewardship team would like to present a little play to introduce our pledge campaign this year. Being good stewards of our community is like growing a garden. Good soil is needed, that's the community, and sunshine is needed, those are our principles. We need water, this is our staff, and we need weeding, those are our volunteers. Oh, and we need seeds, those are our ideas and dreams. And we also need compost. Those are our pledges. So as we tend and grow our garden, let us give thanks to our bounty of people. For children who are our second growth. And though they grow like weeds, and the wind too soon blows them away, may they forgive us our cultivation and fondly remember where their roots are. Let us give thanks. For generous friends with hearts and smiles as bright as their blossoms. For feisty friends as tart as apples. For continuous friends like scallions and cucumbers keep reminding us that we've had them our crotchety friends as sour as rhubarb and as indestructible or handsome friends who are as gorgeous as eggplants and as elegant as a row of corn and the others as plain as potatoes and so good for you for funny friends, who are as silly as Brussels sprouts, and as amusing as Jerusalem artichokes. 
and serious friends as unpretentious as cabbages, as subtle as summer squash, as persistent as parsley, as delightful as dill, as endless as zucchini, and who, like parsnips, can be counted on to see you through the winter. For old friends nodding like sunflowers in the evening, and for young friends coming on as fast as radishes. For loving friends who wind around us like tendrils and hold us despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for those friends now gone, like gardens past that have been harvested, but who fed us in their times that we might have life thereafter. And while we're planting our garden for daily living, let's be sure to plant three rows of peas. Peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul. Plant four rows of squash. Squash gossip, squash indifference, squash grumbling, and squash selfishness. And let us plant four rows of lettuce. Let us be faithful. Let us be kind. Let us be patient. And let us really love one another. Now, no garden should be without turnips. Turn up for meetings, turn up for service, and turn up to help each other. Finally, your garden must have time. Time for each other, time for family, time for friends, and time for yourself. Water your garden freely with patience and cultivate with love. And last but not least, to ensure we have a successful garden, one that will nourish us and see us through the year ahead, we also need nutrients nutrients. So let us encourage one another to bring our spadeful of rich and sustaining compost, our pledges, to grow our garden. The garden rests over the winter. In the springtime, it's time to tend the garden. This year, we will come back strong from this difficult and trying pandemic time. We will grow and sustain a healthy and fruitful garden. This will include some grafting, like adding branches of virtual gatherings to our tree of in-person events, developing a hybrid model for our activities. We can walk down the garden path towards being radically inclusive. Some folks will be able to enjoy, ser enjoy services and in-person and other events can be virtually attended by people who, for whom it's not feasible. To come back strong and to maintain and improve our programs and building requires substantial dollars each year. We realize that these are very difficult times, but we ask that you be as generous as you are able when filling out your pledge form. Thank you. And our centering time this morning continues this idea of a garden. Rather than words, silence, and music, it is a musical piece. And I invite you to enjoy the words, the music, sing along if you like, and center yourselves as we enjoy our centering moment. Inch by inch, row by row, Gonna make this garden grow All it takes is a rake and a hoe And a piece of fertile ground Inch by inch, row by row Someone bless these seeds I sow Someone warm them from below Till the rain comes tumbling down Pulling weeds and picking stones Man is made of dreams and bones 
feel the need to grow my own Cause the time is close at hand Rain for grain, sun and rain Find my way in nature's chain Tune my body and my brain To the music of the land Here's my age Grow by row Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Love and care. Old bro watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. In my garden I'm as free as that feather thief up inch by inch. Row by row. Inch by inch. Row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Till the rain comes tumbling down. Inch by inch. That was delightful. <clears throat> In religious community, we share our joys and our triumphs, our sorrows and our broken places. In this circle of care, we make space for the complexities of life, the myriad experiences that bless and break our hearts. The truth of human experience dictates that on any given day, we each come to the table with hearts in different places. The lighting of these candles is a recognition of our shared humanity. Today, our global candle recognizes that yesterday was UN World Day of social justice. We know that social justice is something that must be addressed every day. The global pandemic has revealed our interconnection so very concretely and has also exposed even more clearly the existing inequities and skewed priorities that call for realignment. I extend again the invitation to join us post coffee hour to talk about social justice and what we might do. For now, as I light our global candle, I invite you to name aloud or in silence, hold those global concerns on which you wish to shed light. so much pain and anxiety these days, so many losses. Death counts are given daily and in our own lives. Death as a natural process of life brings such short sorrow and remembering. Death of a cousin and a friend this week and especially we hold gently Tom Merhati whose mother passed away. May sorrow shared bring some comfort. There are members of this community in hospital, and many of our loved ones are suffering illness of body, mind, and spirit. May the loving thoughts extended be received as healing energy. 
so much uncertainty. Uncertainty of safe housing and adequate food and many financial and other stresses. Our response of starting our own food bank is one way that we as a community have responded. Today, as I light our candle of concern, I invite you to speak aloud or hold in the silence of your heart those sorrows and concerns that are resting with you. And along with life's sorrows and tribulations, there is also always joy and celebration. We celebrate your presence here today. The joy of coming together and of welcoming new strangers who are becoming friends in our midst. There have been announcements of new babies on the way recovery from illness, relational conflicts have been resolved and there have been wedding anniversaries. As I light our candle of joy and celebration, I invite you to speak aloud or hold in silence those individuals and situations brightening your heart today. And a final joy. Today I have the, enjoy, the joy of inviting the president of our board of trustees, Jane Ebern, to offer a special announcement. Hello. The board of trustees has decided to create an award for extraordinary service to our congregation by a team. This will be awarded from time to time not necessarily every year, as we see an amazing team in action. And we have decided to name this award in honor of Gorham Hussey, a longtime member of our congregation who lived from 1931 to 2018. Gorham was a great team player from his work on search committees to board of trustees, to choir, to green sanctuary. This year we have witnessed and hugely benefited from the amazing efforts of our Sunday service AV team, who so quickly got us up and running with online services. In fact, I remember March 12th deciding, okay, I guess we need to go online. And we were online for March 15th, amazing. Together, they figured out the intricacies of Zoom, webinars versus meetings, sound issues, PowerPoints, video presentations, live music, and YouTube videos of services. We had been talking in the past about the need to get more digital, more online, and boom, along came COVID-19. This Sunday service AV team moved us with great speed and great skill into the digital age. And they continue to provide vital Sunday service expertise and leadership every week. This award is being given to Bill Barnum, Paul Dorotich, Christopher Feetz, John Mitchell, Daria skibbington Roffel, Hendrik Shank, Jim Washbrook, and Ev Dewar as PowerPoint coordinator lead with assistance from Paula McMaster, Mady Cuvillon, and Holly Noel. Many, many thanks and sincere congratulations to all of you on this team. A plaque for the Gorham Hussey Award will be created and displayed in the Barker Room, and we look forward to celebrating this award with these recipients at our very first congregational lunch, 
when we are back together in our building. And will you now please join me in a big round of applause for these wonderful, wonderful people. And now back to Deborah for our reflections. So well deserved that award. And a challenge it was to keep it a surprise to the AV team. I feel incredible anticipation every year when the snow does its final melt and tenacious little bits of green begin to appear. Bending closer to the ground, the smell of the soil fills me with such a deep sense of connection. Looking even closer, there's movement there. The worms appear every once in a while and their efforts and living so beneficial, aerating and fertilizing, the soil is alive. There's a great short little video I have now watched many, many times titled The Soil Story. I encourage you to watch it. It offers a possibility of easing the environmental crisis by focusing on the soil's potential for capturing carbon. It's part of its true nature and offers a balancing effect. This morning, it reminds me of the stewardship team naming soil as community. One of the most challenging consequences of this year of social distancing has been isolation and loneliness. Loneliness has been identified even pre-pandemic as a significant health risk. This community has been incredible in reaching out, attempting to make sure everyone is connected. The caring team has initiated contacts and responded to needs. And individuals are actively engaged in virtual visits and phone calls, dropping off meals and providing support of all kinds. This year, we have perhaps learned even more deeply how important community is. We have noticed also the challenges some po folks have to getting connected and have attempted to respond to as many of those needs as possible. There's a recognition of the need for an even more robust caring team and figuring out different ways to both stay connected and make sure we include everyone. We've learned that there are so many differing ways of connecting we had begun some diligent work with accessibility pre-COVID and are now aware of even additional dimensions of accessibility. While we are out of the building, new lifts are being installed to make sure our building, when we can return to it, is more physically accessible for those with mobility issues. Accessibility during these times has been Zoom possible for most, but not everyone. How do we include everyone? Radical inclusion inquire, requires us thinking about differing learning styles, looking into closed captioning and other ways to include those with sensory and ability challenges. We so want the soil of community to be nurturing for all the plants. Ah, plantings. Sheila's story so spoke to the possibility and the potential. And plantings, the ache in my heart when the dry brown stalk of last year's peony the one transplanted from a friend's garden five years ago shows 
no sign of life. I resolve to its loss and then, lo and behold, the first sort of rusty color and then green growth reminds me of the importance of acceptance of what is as well as the presence of hope's possibility. Each year she comes back, comes back stronger. This year people have stepped up to care for each other and the garden of this community in unexpected ways. People we have not seen for a long time have returned because they can. They can come virtually when physically being present was a challenge. And others have come unbounded by distance. We have learned we can be community online and will continue this in some kind of hybrid form for it is truly an aspect of the inclusion and welcome we want to offer. We were so fortunate that the vision of virtual services was already being considered. We invested in infrastructure to make it so. The necessary equipment, or at least much of it, was already there, actualized as the dream, a seed of a previous stewardship campaign. <laughs> and the amazing AV team, so rightfully acknowledged, with the new Gorham Hussey Award this morning. They were so nimble and they remain so, adapting sometimes weekly to new upgrades of Zoom. We were pushed forward by consequences further down the garden path to virtual community and we were already on our way there. Now back to the garden. I have garlic shoots that pop up, planted in the autumn with the hope that they will do so in the spring, but a few rogue ones appearing in spots where no planting has been. And unexpected blessings have emerged from this challenging time as well. So many of us have talked about being able to take an online course or attend a concert, a lecture, or a seminar because of virtual offerings. This year, we have been engaged with another Unitarian congregation, the South Fraser Unitarian Congregation, in a world religions program that some folks are doing as a course, but all of us are engaged at least one Sunday a month as we focus on a different world faith and there have been national services, like the one two weeks ago, that bring us together and introduce us to Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists across this country. This had never been done before, and I'm sure will be a lasting legacy of this time. And here in Calgary this year, when the Calgary Interfaith Council offered the UN World Interfaith Harmony Week, the first week in February, we offered visits to faith communities. We've done this in previous years. However, this year we were able to offer far more and with no travel needed, no complications of weather, the attendance at these programs was multiply, multiplied oftentimes a thousand percent with 20 or 30 people attending each of the services. There are so many, so many ways that there have been blessings from this time. The seeds, the ideas of utilizing virtual connection, I think will always be with us and will be expanded as we move back into being in closer connection with each other. 
Someone bless these seeds I sow till the rain comes tumbling down. While rains, water nourishing the tiny seeds of ideas and hopes, your stewardship team has named staff as the water. And talk about being nimble. Sheila, our amazing director of religious education, has adapted her staff to meet the current requirements and is constantly looking at and adjusting programs. And as you've already seen this morning, she has an amazing virtual presence and always brings a message of hope and challenge. We have a new communications person. His name's Todd and most of you haven't met him yet, but he brings not only great humor to the staff team, but also amazing expertise in the areas of communication and website and virtual communication that we are going to be rolling out more of in the coming year. And there's Jane, Jane Perry, our amazing music director who has had to perhaps more than any of us adjust what she does with music. She creates community and her choirs, both the afternoon coffee choir and new euphonia choirs are some of the most densely, I don't know if that's the right word, attended um, functions. And she has just been amazing in adapting to what we're doing. Now, the reality is that we will also be in the search process for an interim minister. And this will all be done virtually. In fact, many of the actual full searches that are going on for ministers is being done virtually, which enables us to articulate our principles in ways that are surprising, but avoid the necessity for travel, that expense, as well as the impact on the environment. And yet they're being successful. And water and soil together make mud, right? And things sure can and have been getting muddy at times. And yet that mud is also what nurtures all of the ideas, gives us the gardens that allow us to be community. We know the world has been altered, that our community has changed in ways we don't even yet realize. We also know that there is incredible resilience and adaption possible that invites us to explore coming back even stronger. With the soil of community seeded with ideas and possibilities, warmed by the sun of this amazing faith, tended by everyone doing their little or big bit that they can to nourish the garden, many hands and all of that. And of course, the compost of each person's financial contributions. After all, this is the stewardship kickoff service. It may yet be muddy and rough, and we will get there. We will be back physically together. We know we will, and we are here together so grateful for this way of being in community and recognizing what a beloved community this truly is. Will you join us now, please, in singing Woyaya?
each Sunday, we take just a moment to recognize the ongoing financial resources needed to keep this congregation vital and to recognize our individual capacity to contribute to it. There has already been mention of the annual pledge campaign for those who choose to make the recognized and ongoing commitment to watering the garden that is this beloved community. Others, perhaps newer folks, are invited to show their appreciation and gratitude weekly or through periodic contributions. Let us take that moment now with grateful and generous hearts. Thank you. The song says, plant your rows straight and long, temper them with prayer and song, and Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Here on Sunday mornings, we have the chance to temper ourselves and our community with prayer and song. So grateful are we. So important is our relationship, our connection in the interdependent web of all existence to our Mother Earth, that we work to make her strong and in return receive so much. I invite us to sing our commitment with the closing song, Fire of Commitment, and sing out loud and sing out strong as we support one another and name our commitment to this community.
Our closing words today are an excerpt and just slightly modified words by Judith Smith Valley in our book, Rejoice Together. Eternal Spirit, as we take stock of life, as we reflect on success and defeat, allow us an awareness of how far we have come. Rejoice with us in our accomplishments and mourn with us our losses. Help us to make workable resolutions and goals, knowing that our personal lives touch and influence the lives of others. Give us perspective to make priorities. Be with us, eternal spirit, as we render designs and draw garden blueprints for the year to come. So be it. As our time in this sacred space comes to an end, and as I extinguish the chalice, I invite us each and every one to take the warmth of this community and hopefully the inspiration received this morning with you as you will go about your week until we meet again. And now to Jane Perry for our closing sung benediction. As we close our worship service this morning, uh, we want to invite all of you to join us for our virtual coffee hour. To get to the coffee hour, you can just click on the link that has just appeared in the chat area of this screen or follow the um, uh, links and advice from the church website. Let's sing together our song benediction. <laughs>